Yeah, thanks, thanks very much, Andrew. So as, as has been mentioned a couple of times already, um, Aurora, uh, 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 our female killer whale, and as of a couple of weeks ago, our last killer whale at the Vancouver Aquarium. I, I, <laughs> was she a beluga? God. <laughs> Oh man, it shows what kind of shape I'm in today. Um, yeah, passed away uh, last night. Um, so this is the first time in 49 years, apparently, that there has not been a beluga in Vancouver. Um, the uh, Aurora's death, death was preceded two weeks ago by the death of, of her calf, Keela. Um, the, I know there's a lot of uh, uh, questions about you know, what could possibly have cause this double mortality. Um, I, I, I can't speculate on that. Um, and those of you who know me know that you can't really shut me up. <laughs> and I would if I, if I had any information. I really would. But I, um, I don't. Um, and uh, not only do I not have any information, but it's still um, very much a, uh, a, a, an open question. Our, our vet, Marty Helena, Stephen Rafferty, our the veterinary pathologist who's sort of world-renowned for his work on uh, uh, on the, the pathology of animals in general, but he's certainly an expert on cetaceans, um, has not been able to determine the cause of death of Keela. Stephen's doing a, Stephen and Marty are doing a necropsy on Aurora today out at the um, Animal Health Center. Um, the, uh, really, the realm, the range of possibilities is still is, is extends all the way from sort of a fungal pathogen to, to a bacterial pathogen to a viral pathogen to to a toxin, um, and uh, the, uh, we're pulling the stops out, to, trying to figure that out. I got an email from Stephen this morning, um, and uh, it's very much a, it's a very high-profile event. I think what I did want to to say is, um, uh, Keela, the baby, <laughs> the beluga passed away last uh, two weeks ago, was the baby beluga of the Rafi song. Um, it inspired the Rafi song. Um, you know, children throughout, throughout the, the Lower Mainland and throughout British Columbia have grown up with these belugas, young adults um, as well. Um, the, the aquarium group, the aquarium family is devastated. I think a lot of people in the city are devastated. Right now there's, uh, uh, there's sort of an impromptu uh, area, a sort of area of mourning at the Vancouver Aquarium, I guess, with, with the public are visiting and the flowers and letters of condolence and, and so on are coming in. Um, I guess what I'd like to say is that, you know, um, from the perspective of someone who's worked at the aquarium, but gosh, I don't think you really have to work there to, to, to get it. Um, the, uh, no matter how you feel about marine mammals in captivity, you have to appreciate that uh, being a trainer or being an animal care worker at the Vancouver Aquarium is something that the people, that most people who find themselves in those positions have aspired to for their whole lives. So, you know, your kids grow up in Vancouver, they want to be a marine biologist. There's at least one in the audience here today who who's, has that, uh, that aspiration. Um, you work your brains out, really, to get, a, to get the kind of position that uh, would put you in contact with the animals at the aquarium. Um, the, uh, when you get there, you find out, you know, if you're, if you're lucky enough to get a job as a trainer, you find out that you're at the bottom of the totem pole and you spend your time thawing fish. And, and, uh, and if you're lucky, you, you get, start to get limited contact with the animals. Um, when, uh, when the kind of contact that the people and, and cetaceans in particular form in, in these kinds of institutions is really... It's quite amazing um, how strong that is. I mean, these, these animals really become, you know, as important or more important, I, I, I have to say, and sometimes as family members to, 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 these, uh, to these staff members. And for myself, I, I work in the, uh, I've been at the aquarium for 15 years. I work in the, in the research department. I was hired to work on wild, uh, to conduct research in the wild. I, I've conducted a little bit at the aquarium, but not much. When I arrived, we had a very, capable and competent uh, and extensive program going on run by UBC, by Andrew's group, um, working on, on, the, uh, on the animals there. Um, so, uh, so my experience at the aquarium has been one really of, of interacting with those animals in a non primarily a non-research capacity. When I started uh, 15 years ago, um, my office my, was the underground bunker that some of you visited. Um, 
My only window, it was the office of my predecessor, John Ford, had occupied. My only window looked into the beluga tank, into the, into the med pool. Um, so when I came in in the morning, the belugas would crowd in the window to, to, to see me. When I left at the end of the day, if I did anything weird, <laughs> the belugas were there to check me out. If I had a kid in the office, there could be 100 kids on the other side of the glass in the public galleries. If I had one child in my office, the belugas would all crowd to look in to make sure that that kid, kid was okay. My own son was two years old then. He, uh, he resembled a beluga, I have to say. Um, people, people would look at my wife, Kathy, and say, gosh, condolences. He had a big forehead. Um, and, and, uh, he said, relatively long birth. Um, and uh, uh, he's 17 years old now, but he grew up with him. And uh, you know, whenever Lee was in my office, he liked to sit up in the window. Um, you know, the belugas would all crowd around, and the trainers would eventually come down and say, what, what are you doing down there? We, uh, belugas won't, won't come out for the show, you know? And, because uh, they were that interested. And, and I, I think it was on my first week working at the Vancouver Aquarium, I cycled into work early, standing there in my office with my pants around my ankles, changing out of my cycling clothes, and I look up, and all the belugas are staring in at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, that's how, that's sort of how it was. And over the years, we've had, um, uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs with marine mammals. We've had, um, but, but um, as everybody knows here, um, but the, the belugas have really been the mainstay of, of our marine mammal collection. And they're the, um, again, you know, no matter how you feel personally about marine mammals at, in captivity, you know, I defy anybody to contradict me on the, on the reasons that we have them. We have them to serve as animal ambassadors, to, to inculcate a, a sort of a stewardship ethic um, and, a con and a care about these animals in the wild, that's why we do it. And you may think that's, a, that's not the right way to do it, but that's why we, that's, our, that's our, been our approach since day one. And uh, I, I certainly feel that they've, that they've had that effect. Um, and, uh, you know, our, uh, our feelings about marine animals in captivity generally evolve over time. Um, I, make a point when I walk through Stanley Park um, of walking by the old polar bear uh, uh, enclosure as often as I can. That's what we used to do. Um, the, uh, you know, I think our standard of care for the belugas was, 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 was high. Um, and, uh, and it was certainly as high as we could, as we could make it. We did our best. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm happy to, to talk about, you know, where we might go from here, but uh, uh, I have nothing to add. Um, and I have no particular insight into that, I guess, that others here in the room wouldn't, wouldn't have as well. We're not sure what we're going to do. Um, but I would ask, uh, you know, for those of you who work at the aquarium or have worked at the aquarium um, or have visited the aquarium on a regular basis, um, you know, my sympathies to you at this point. And, uh, and at the same time, I ask um, that... Uh, that you'd be somewhat sympathetic, at least, to the staff at this point. I find it very distasteful, Larry, I'm talking to you partly, um, when the press hammer us when these things happen. Um, it's not fair. You know, you, the, the, the people who feel that, who take that criticism the hardest are the young, younger staff there. They're suffering from grief. When they pick up the newspaper and somebody's written an article about, you know, or, or or flipped open the Rolodex and talked to the first animal, you know, no whales in captivity person that falls out, and to get a contrary opinion, and our staff have to deal with the grief and have to deal with the fact that they're suddenly pariahs. It makes me angry, um, and uh, um, and it's not a question of of how you feel about it, about animals in captivity. It's how you feel about people. So give us a break for a little bit, please, and um, uh, and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have.